she has a whistle and when we we had a rule that we had to check in with them every hour on the hour um, you know way before cell phones you know now yeah. our kids carry cell phones around we can get a hold of them like that so she had a whistle if we didn't show up in time for a check-in she she do her, her whistle and I mean it's like a trained dog we we would come running if we heard that whistle oh, yeah. and that was embarrassing because everybody <laughs> else knew the whistle too at the horse shows they knew that was her calling for us <laughs> But so I learned it too. I learned the whistle and I use it on my kids. It's very effective. <laughs> I think horse shows made my kids what they are today in so many different ways. The responsibility of taking care of an animal, um, making sure they're fed, just just the the uh, connection that they have with the horse is so wonderful. It, they they become their companion, and um, uh, you just can't you can't buy that anywhere you know it's it's hard to package you have to you have to be able to experience it my parents bought some quarter horse mares when I was about 11 years old we'd always had a pony or a horse before then after three years we started going to quarter horse shows we didn't even start out at open shows we started right away going to AQHA shows that were about 20 25 miles from our home we didn't know anything we just went and our dad told us to watch the girls who were older and were successful in the show ring. So that's what we did. They were girls like Tana Baker and Diane Sapp Eppers. And then fast forward 20 some years and um, my children were raised around quarter horses. They, they learned the responsibility of having an animal, having to take care of them before they take care of themselves. When you go to a horse show, the horses are bedded down and fed before you go eat dinner and go get go to your hotel. Um, it, it's just a wonderful. It was a it was a wonderful way to grow up, and it was a wonderful way to raise my children. I, I just really appreciate that. And, and now I have a, some little grandchildren who are also starting to show AQHA. So we've kind of come. Um, we're, we're three generations now, and we have a lot of friends who have who started in youth activity like I did, um, raise their children in it. Some people take some time off and then they come back and that's really, that's what we want. That's, that's, um, that's been so important to me. I think showing horses is like a microcosm of life. You win some, you lose some, and that's the way life is. It really prepares them for life and adulthood. Some of my proudest moments in the horse business are bringing Really raising your own horses is has been wonderful. We had a my first show horse, my first show mare was named Wagon Lee, and we bred her to Jetty Man, my father's Jet Deck Stallion, AQHA AAA champion, um, and we we got a sorrel filly called Loverly Jet. She ended up being the winner of the Halter Futurity in our state. She ended up being the two-year-old pleasure futurity champion. And then she went on to be a reigning horse. And then she went on to be a kid's horse. She could, you could ride her everywhere. When Travis was little, he would, we would put her on him. And the only trouble was sometimes she'd lay down with him when she was done. <laughs> but um, that's very gratifying to raise your own and, and have success like that. Um, and have other people acknowledge it too. I have worn a lot of hats in the horse business over the years as a trainer, a breeder, a youth mother, um, and starting out as a youth activity exhibitor. So I think that has helped me with the different committees that I've been on at AQHA. I started out on marketing, which is very interesting. Then I was, I call it the homework committee, the, the uh, equine research committee, and I learned so much on that from the veterinarians and the experts who were on that committee, and it really helped me apply things in the breeding barn. It was really, that was very helpful to me. Um, and then I was on the nomination credentials committee. That really helped me understand the governance and the bylaws of AQHA, very beneficial. I've also been on the Hall of Fame committee, which is very, you know, I love the respect that we have for our Hall of Fame and that people can, that, that are inducted into it, how, how special they are to us and keeping our history alive. 
Um, as a youth, remembering back, um, what has that allowed you? I mean, did, when you were a kid showing, did you ever imagine you'd be a QHA president? No, I thought that was some older man who was a rancher from Texas or Colorado or something. I never envisioned that I would be president of AQHA. Uh, I have the benefit of being of growing up in the youth activity program. I was very young when I was young and I showed along with my sisters which was so special for keeping us all together and uh, it, it just has it made us really bond together as especially as teenagers which are very important times to keep a family together. She's just a very genuine person. There's nothing that you know, she never meets a stranger. She gets that from her dad, you know, oh, yeah. from, from granddad. You know, he was always, um, everybody knew when he'd come into a room, and she's kind of the same way. She, you know, she never meets a stranger. She always remembers your name. And there's nothing that people, after meeting her for the five minutes, don't walk away and, and, and wonder if there's anything else there. It's, yeah, what you see is what, what you, you get. What you see is what you get. Just very genuine. Mm -hmm. That's who she is, and no specific facade, it's just genuine. Looking forward in AQHA, I think we need new people, but mainly youth. Getting children involved at an early age is so important for the association to keep it viable. We're developing the youth initiative called Take Me Riding. It's going to be a wonderful program, and I'm so excited about it. The world is changing, and the association has to also. I think our biggest challenge, and is the largest challenge for any any breed association, any horse association, are all of the other activities that people have in this world today mm -hmm. and hobbies. There's uh, we we have definitely lost a, the connection to agriculture as opposed to what I when I was growing up. My generation at least had grandparents that lived on the farm and now that might be two generations removed from that. So I think the biggest challenge is keeping our membership and keeping young people coming into it. We really, that's what, we're, and that's what we're working on with the Youth Initiative.